ready, fire, aim. You can only be so ready for something before you decide that you got to pull the trigger and you're going to see where your shot lands. And when you see where it lands, it gives you an incredible opportunity to start honing in on your aim. If you were too high, you were too low, too left, too right, you can adjust course accordingly. But there has to be a willingness buried into your framework to allow for those things to happen. Welcome back to another installment of the Perspective Podcast. My name is Devin, this is my co-host Mitch Harley, and today we have Steve Wiltz on, um, and he is on a really incredible mission. Um, We want to have our conversation kind of centralize around the focus of uh, taking action, and the reason is because uh, when we found Steve, he was right in the trenches of uh, of building something and bringing it to life and in our initial conversations he attributed that to uh, his i guess desire and motivation to just take action and see what the result is and uh, and run with it so um steve i'd love to get a little bit of background on your mission here and what you've created for our audience if you wouldn't mind just kind of walk us back to the beginning where where did this all come from um, you know, I think it really kind of, it stemmed back. I know where it stemmed from, uh, my, I've got kids there, six and 10, my oldest, um, for whatever reason, it might've been COVID might've been locked down, who knows, but really started having issues with, um, just being an- anxious about a lot of stuff and, and fighting, you know, even like a, a little bit of depression at that young age, it felt like, and so <clears throat> in talking to her, I wanted to give her something to look forward to and make her understand and help her to understand that she had a huge impact in the world. Um, even though she was, she was 10, I know anybody can, can make a big impact. And so we had talked about doing these smile cards for months, actually. So I did definitely didn't take action right away. Um, but it got her kind of hyped up and I said, well, let's, we'll write something up on, on a card. We'll print some things out and we can start handing them out to people. And, I want to show you that what you do has a ripple effect on, on the world in itself and, and how far that can spread. You have no idea. And so, you know, as time kind of went through it, it took a little bit more time than I had wanted to, because I just, I don't know why I kept putting it off. It just wasn't high on my priority list. And I wrote up, you know, a simple, I don't know if this is 10 lines or so of uh, just a kind of a poem, um, encouraging words. Um, can you read it? Can you read it to us? Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, says, here's a simple smile, just given to brighten your day because smiles, they come and go, but this one's here to stay. So keep it as long as you need to and take it out when you can't be strong or when you think you need to brighten someone else's day, go ahead and pass it along. Um, that was just a late night chicken scratch. I think is how it started. That's um, really powerful because it's not just that initial like spark that you, you know, you get, okay, here's a smile. Everybody smiles. And then on with your day, there's like, uh, buried in there instructions to, you know, when you're not feeling like you're at your best, you can keep using this smile to remind you of the things you got to be grateful for. I think that's super powerful. Well, it's a, it's a call to action, right? A continuing call to action to have that upbeat mindset, right? Especially when things aren't keeping you there. Yeah, I think that was, I mean, that was the main point I had to incorporate that in there somewhere so that, you know, that's the hardest thing I think is getting someone to take action or the call to action. And just a reminder, Hey, you know, when you, you see someone who needs it too, more than you just did and I uh, pass it along. And I think that really resonated with, with my little girls um, and myself, and my wife, especially too. So yeah, I mean, that was the whole point. It was, this isn't to keep necessarily, but I, I tend to hand them out in twos one to keep one to give away. Um, but then who knows what happens from there? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know where they end up. Um, there's all sorts of things that I've got envisioned to, to do with them, embedding QR codes and making them trackable and all that good stuff. It's just taking a lot longer to get to fruition, but. Well, essentially it's kind of building that community around this centralized idea. Um, I, well, your website is rippletime.com. Is that what it is? Or are you setting in the process of setting that up? Yeah, it, that's active um, on there. You can find the different versions of cards. I actually just got four new ones delivered here today. Um, they weren't supposed to. Well, 
actually they were supposed to be here. Another four were supposed to be here also. So we'll see if those make it today, but it's, it's kind of just starting to branch out. It started with, you know, I, I started handing them out. We started doing it for a few weeks or a month and I took video snippets here and there. Cause I was on TikTok and, and dinking around on there. Uh, Cause that was fun. And I love the marketing aspect or just the algorithm aspect of it all. Just kind of how your content gets out to certain people or places or whatnot. And so I went ahead and made a post on a Sunday afternoon probably, I don't think it was either noon or like two. And by midnight that day, I had so many requests for orders. I just threw something up on Shopify. Uh, and I, I want to say within that first month, we probably went through 60,000 cards um, as far as orders go. And, and it's just been fairly steady since then, you know, it's a little bit slower. It just depends on what I put out there and, and where it's visible. So and had you not initially, you know, made that decision to try something, even though, you know, in the face of all of it, it's really easy to dismiss it and go, yeah, I mean, it's a cool idea, but nobody's like, nobody's going to care about this or whatever. Uh, what motivated you to keep going or, you know, trekking down that path? A big part of that is just the messages, emails, um, friends I've made that are, are closer to me, I think, than some of the people that I have here locally, you know, you build relationships through social media, uh, much more than I had ever really envisioned happening. Um, you, you get this intimate relationship with, with some of the people that you just connect with on there. Um, but yeah, I get emails and messages and, and things like that all the time that are, thank you for this. It's really helping me. You made my day you know, I got some of your cards or I got some, I get them from people that have gotten them. Um, cause they'll follow the hashtag, which is kind of the whole point and bring them all back to a centralized deal. And on that website, you know, we're still continuing to build out the capabilities on there where you can interact and, you know, track where it's been, sh you know, share a story, that sort of thing. Um, but driving people to get there. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole mission is to kind of have it centralized. Um, and that's just taking a little while, but these are things I had visions when it, when it first started taking off, I was like, Oh yeah, six months. And this thing's going to be huge and going to be crazy. And, you know, this is no problem. You know, it's got some really good steam right now. And it was really humbling to see just how much work goes into it and appreciate what other people do as a, you know, as a business or as, you know, as a creator, you stop and it's, and it stops, you know, so you have to keep going. And I just, Every day, you know, I get a new comment. And I said, you know, can't stop, won't stop. I'm in too deep now. You know, I'm just emotionally invested in it. Just watching the effect that it's been having. Um, you know, and maybe it's a few hundred people. Maybe it's a few thousand. Who knows? Um, but it'll keep going. And you know, that's, that's, I'm not going to stop. Have you, in the wake of all of this, experienced any uh, negative feedback along the way? Um. Every once in a while, you get a little, a little hair comment, but it was, I really honestly think there's probably only been like two. Somebody said, oh, I would take that and toss it in the garbage or something like that. And somebody else said something along those lines, but that's, that's it. I mean, I really haven't had any kind of negative repercussion or feedback from, from anybody, which is not what I expected. I figured, you know, especially like my buddies, I mean, you know how we are with our guy friends. It's, it's a different world, right? We're out fishing and hunting and, and it's different, but they all realize like he just really doesn't care. And that takes a while to get to, I think mentally for all of us is <laughs> just, I'm good. I like who I am. I'm going to keep doing this. I don't care if you think it's stupid or you think I'm being less of a man for pushing smiles and positivity. Um, and I haven't gotten anything from even any of my friends. So I think they get it. And so there's nobody says anything. I don't know. I think that's been kind of neat too. So normalizes is this, it. Is this still, uh, sorry for the term hobby. Is this still kind of a side project for you? Is it something that you just kind of burn the boats and go into? Like what, what stage are you at with this as far as your, your life? Yeah, it's definitely still a side project. Um, because there's so much more that I think that I can, that I can do with it. Um, and all that just takes so much time. Um, I have today off. I have a regular nine to five. I work in the baking industry. Um, but I was just on a trip. I was in California the last few days for an awards, uh, awards deal. 
we got back late last night at like midnight and I decided I'm not, I'm not working today. And so I've been filling orders and doing some things for this, but my days off are just another day on in a, in a different aspect of things. So yeah, how I would love to build it out. Love to be able to do it as something that is, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I wake up for. And you, you, you're excited. And this wouldn't be a, a job. It'd be, be different working for yourself, pushing out good things. I just don't see anything better than that. So it's eventually. crazy how in that uh, off time, you know, you, you got your regular nine to five, but there's like a day off that you should be like relaxing, doing this, doing that. And instead, whatever part of you is just like naturally drawn into the mission that you're on the thing. That, and uh, oddly enough, I don't know about your experience, but my experience it, when I was kind of in a similar space was that I enjoy this so much that my time off, like that's what I want to do is enjoy the time that I have to do things. It, has that been a similar experience for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hit it on the nail on the head. It was just, it, it's hard to describe to someone who hasn't like found that yet, you know, but to have just a passion and watch it be changing lives and doing things on a, on a simple plastic card, right. For, for what it's worth, you know, and I think that's pretty neat how social media allows us to do that. I think if we've learned anything in the last 18 months, it's yeah. How flexible you got to be as, as a business or as a person um, and how much you can do just from your basement. I, my room for all of this is our, our craft room which uh, <laughs> was originally an office for me. And then it turned it into my wife's craft room. And now it's kind of half and half deal. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's hard to describe to someone who hasn't found something quite like that, but it is an amazing feeling, you know, much like you guys are doing what you love I, as far as I can tell. Right. So it's not, it's not so much a job as it is like, Hey, this is what I want to do. And if I can make some money doing it and I can change some, change some people's perspective or some lives with it, then I, I don't, I just don't see a better way. It, it's kind of funny because I think it does resonate with us to, to such a deep level. I mean, how me and Devin met, how we started working together, both of us kind of had this vision of like building something and then, and then we ended up meeting and then built something together. Right. And I think, I think you're kind of in that same mindset where, you know, if you found someone else that was doing happy cards and you just hadn't met them, I mean, it would be like a powerhouse to get together and, and collaborate. And, and I think that's really neat. And I think what you're doing has such a great potential for reach, right? Because where are you based out of? I'm based out of Michigan, Southwest okay. Michigan. And what's amazing about like, especially with the social media platform, I know I talked to you before about, you know, how, how great of a reach, because the person that introduced me to you was from Texas. And that person we met on social media and came on the show. So it's like, we, we have this network that we've been building across all North America. And even now we're international uh, with some of the people that we've connected with. And it's all because of social media. And it's such a, I would say probably one of the strongest networks I've ever been a part of, but it's because we all have kind of the same mindset and same view of what's important and what's valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of followers from Texas actually, which is, I don't want to say it's odd, but it, it intrigues me on who sees what, where, right? Um, We're all trying to break the algorithm. Just, yeah. Right. They've sent them all this to different countries, but there's certain countries I don't have any reach in. And so that's the part that's, that's intriguing. Right. And it's just like, Hey, keep going. What do you do different or, or what's holding it up or it's the algorithm or it's some ban on something or other who knows. Right. But yeah, that's cool that, that you actually got it from someone in, in Texas. Cause um, there's a couple of creators actually that I'm working with too. They have um they and this goes along the lines of just taking action they shot some dms to me on on tiktok and said hey can we talk can we get together uh would we face a facetime deal and they have their own kind of it's called move it forward and so we've done facetime videos for hours um the last couple of weeks and so they're their vision their mission is one and the same we're, we're doing some collaborative cards together um, that I, I think I'll have next week. Um, and there's is, is random acts of kindness too. It's just making someone's day and then, and then moving, moving it forward. He is in, uh, uh, he's in Tennessee and she's in Pennsylvania and they're best of friends. Their story is really cool too, but, um, I'll let them tell that sometime, but 
but yeah, just getting together with other creators on there too. And there's another one in, in Georgia, in Georgia that wants to kind of join in and got kind of one in Wyoming. Like maybe this all comes together as a as a collaboration, which you see you with with a certain set of creators on there right now, depending on what genre you're following or what you're being shown to. A lot of them do it. I just think that's super cool. Yeah, you know, it harkens back to one of our previous episodes where we talked about um kind of ignoring the haters and all that. But one of the themes that kept popping up was that a big part of uh, being in business is finding your tribe, looking for pe- like-minded people that, first of all, when you're networking, that can work with you to build your idea into something bigger. Because um, I, I don't know, I'm a big subscriber to the idea that no man is an island. You need support at some point along the way um, to you know do the thing that you're doing and, and build it out bigger. You only have so many hours in a day and all that kind of stuff. And so having the power of social media to connect us all around a centralized idea, I think it's changing the way that we do business because um, one of the uh, principles that um, I'm really big on is the the bigger the problem you solve, the more rewarding it's going to be. And so somebody like Jeff Bezos solved the world's largest logistical problem, which was a nightmare, getting stuff from all over the place to your house in 24 hours because you're an Amazon Prime member. You know how many thousands of people have to touch something in order for you to get that? Like it's insane how when we work together collectively, how big of an impact uh, that we can have on the world. As you've been building this, um, do you find it getting a little bit easier now that you are connecting with the right people, or is it still kind of a, a challenge of yours to find those people? Uh, you make it. You make a good point in that. Obviously, as a village, we do things much more efficiently. We all have a certain set of skills and not one person is going to have it all. And so from that aspect of things, yeah, it has been easier. Hey, here's an idea or here, use this. Um, I wish that I had found more, well, let's say, uh, more of the team per se on, on social so far. Uh, somebody actually got a hold of me on, on Instagram um, as, a, as a fulfillment company you know, the three PL that I had not known about before. And I just talked to him this morning, uh, early this morning about how we can kind of work together on there. So yes, I think that's starting to come together because that's one of the biggest and hardest things to do is like you said, Bezos is, is shipping billions of products every day. Well, that doesn't take just one man. And I think that a lot of people stumble and their ideas won't continue to grow or scale because they try and do it all themselves. Kind of like what you see behind me is, you know, cards and, and poly containers and printing, you know, labels and all that stuff. I definitely can't continue to do that if I want to have time to be uh, with my family, enjoy that side of things also. And then at the same time, put out content and, and do marketing and do ad, you know, all that stuff. It, you got to have a team, you know, I think to really be able to, to fulfill that, that so mission. I have a question about content. So to, to run, let's just call it a mini business. You're running a mini business that takes time. And that's a whole kind of element, logistics, mechanics uh, in its own. Now, on top of that, because like you said, you don't have a team on top of that. Now you have content. You actually have to have something valuable to fill all that infrastructure that you built, right? And I've seen your content. What I love about it is it's, it's not just that it's positive right? Because you can find positive things out there, but your, your content is worded you very carefully, right? A lot of thought goes into the actual structure of the message, not just the positive thing behind it. And I know for myself on my non-podcast company, on the, on my training company, um, we've put out some, let's just say motivational or, or, you know, positive messaging out there. And it takes a lot to get that quote kind of the way exactly you want it to say, and that it doesn't sound wordy or that it doesn't sound cliche that it sounds actually something meaningful and that you wanted. So when it comes to your, your content, when you put out a, a piece of post, it's not just, you know, a click fast, you can tell a lot of thought went into it. Where does that come from that ability to say, Hey, this is the general message I want to put out on this piece of content. Now I have to critique it and I have to put the wording. Like, I mean, if it was up to me, uh, spelling is the worst thing in the world for me. Like all of my passwords are based on my inability to spell. So, you know, for you, how does that portion of the content, how does that fulfill? 
So I play around with it. Sometimes I'll throw something out there where, you know, it's it's just meant to be funny or just goofing around. It, I find that people who try too hard on content, it never, not that it never does, because maybe I'm just not watching the right stuff, but I think that it, it doesn't resonate the same with people because it feels pushed, mm-hmm. right? So my, I feel like my best stuff is stuff I just, I've been thinking about while I'm driving. This is one thing, it, yeah, I don't turn off, which is a curse <laughs> and a blessing at the same time. Yes, sir. Uh, thinking, right? <laughs> it's something, a, a new post or an idea or whatever it is. And if I, if I don't write them down, which I've had some really good ones that I wanted to do and I don't write them down, so maybe they'll come back to me someday. Um, but I find that if I just do something off the cuff and and speak, I'll speak in a long couple minute long deal. Then I go in and you got a video edit it, uh, you know, take bits and pieces. Sometimes, sometimes you find a really good long run. That's, that's good. And I just go with that. Um, but I've done a lot of, a lot from very young. My parents did, um, an MLM and a big part of that was, business and motivation augmentino books motivational stuff so shoot i was reading that that kind of content at 13 14 years old and just never really stopped i became very self-aware uh so i know when i'm i'm not on or it, it doesn't mean i'm perfect by any means but i know i snap a lot sometimes with the kids and whatnot and, and i'll just sit there and you think about it and you know you know so why did i do what i did this is a huge part of it and I think that really resonates with a lot of people too. And I'm trying to kind of figure out how to get that more out there also. So to your point, it's a work in progress all the time. You know, I've always been really good with words. Um, been a good writer, good at public speaking after I did Toastmasters for like three years, you know, putting video out online the first time was absolutely horrifying. You know, I when I started thinking around on TikTok, it was just whatever little videos, but I was never in them. My voice sure was not in them um, because you know we sound horrible to ourselves, or at least I hate my voice recorded. Right? Uh, it's become different now. It, it's weird how it kind of melds. You get used to it. You know, like, okay, well maybe I don't sound so horrible. But uh, but yeah, it's a constant work in progress. And when I started, it wasn't it wasn't where it was now. I think you just have to know that. You have to keep pushing forward. You have to continue taking action, keep showing up. You know, that's a lot of my messages. Just keep going. You are enough exactly how you are now. Yes, you can grow, uh, but you have to keep going. You You can't grow unless you keep going. Yeah. Do you find it's very relevant right now? Like you said, the last 18 months have been hard on your kids. I mean, my family, same thing. A lot of my close friends, it's a struggle. And, and it's not even about being political. It's not even about having opinions, just life is, is hard. And I think there's so much negativity being pushed now in, in the social media world as well. And especially now, now that all this stuff is coming out, it's even, you know, intentional. God, I I get anxiety just looking at opening up the Facebook app. I don't know about you guys, but it like my heart jumps a little bit and I'm like, nah, this is probably not a good idea. I had to change what I start looking at, like what I like and stuff on, on TikTok because it was pushing so much, you know, division on on what I was seeing. And I had to, had to really change that because you can change the algorithm just by, you know, what, what you look at and what you engage with and not letting myself get worked up so that I could have that positive influence when I go on there rather than having that, that division. But have you seen that as this progresses from when you started to now even more of a need and more of a desire for people latching onto that positivity? Cause it's not getting better out there. It's getting worse. It's not, it is definitely not getting better. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's continuing to get worse. I think it's, it's, you don't know what to believe, you know, when people are getting bashed for this side, that side, do this, do that, all that, that kind of stuff. And that's just exhausting. So yeah, I think it, it's not going away anytime soon, unfortunately, but yeah, there's always going to be a need, a need for it in general, but especially now lately, yeah, I've, I've gotten more and more deeper messages, people opening up and telling their story. And there's a trend right now on there with the, I could be purple. I could be whatever. And people are putting some really, really personal stuff on there. 
you know, this is like what happened to me. And it, and it can be stuff that a heck man, I would, I don't know if I'd tell my best friend, some of the stories that I see on there, you know? And so I think that's cool. And I think that's, that's good to have that start to be a little more normalized. Like we're not perfect. Right. No one is even close to. And so back to your point on making well-pointed contact, it's the same, it's the same thing. I think when you mess up or when you just say something just straight off the sleeve and it comes from the heart, I think that people pick up on that. Um, people really appreciate that authenticity, you know, like when, when you are able to just put yourself out there in a, in a way that, you know, like, this is my story, this is what happened to me. Um, and this is what I learned from it. People really appreciate that because they are looking for the, this is what I learned from it part in spite of everything else. But I think part of being authentic and anything, I think in the bubble of self-development, it's a, it's a practice. You're not just going to wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden be a hundred percent different of a person every day. You're going to be chipping away at those little things. I'm, I'm a musician in case anybody hasn't caught on by now. Um, and I remember the first time I recorded my voice, um, singing or rapping, whatever I was doing at the time, it was horrible. And I have zero idea when I look back, because I sometimes I go back and listen to the first 10 songs I ever made just to like remind myself how far I've come. When I look back at that, I'm like, what thing in all of this said, keep going? Like I was literally the worst. Why did I keep doing this? And I'm like, I'm not the best by any means yet. I can carry a tune much better than I did before. My writing ability is improved and I do still foresee in my future that, uh, you know, singing and music is going to be a big part of that. But I, looking back, I have no idea what really honestly motivated me to keep going except for one thing. And um, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm kind of like naturally good at things that I just try. So as an example, when I was a kid, my mom wanted us all, all of her children to ride horses because she was really big into riding horses. And when I was riding the horse, I was just naturally good at the things that you were meant to do, like, you know, being intuitive with the animal and um, training them and getting them to, to do certain actions and things. I was really, really, really good at it. But it was so boring to me that I was like, this is dumb. I don't want to do this stuff because I, I felt like there was no future in it just because of that. I, I don't know. I'm ADD. I'm, I, I got to be stimulated. But when it came to music, uh, I sucked at it so bad that I was like, I got a lifetime of cool shit that I can do now uh, that I'm going to enjoy, you know, hacking away at it. I'm actually finding that now I started dabbling in Forex and, and trading and things like that. And it's just so complex and my brain is just like overloaded and I, I don't know what I'm doing and I keep losing and blowing accounts. And, but it's like so interesting. I'm like, I got time with this one. I can, I can practice this. I'm, I'm curious though, Steve, what is it um, that pushed you through those moments of like, uh, am I really like, should I really do this? Like, especially that first video where like, why do I sound like that? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what changed it. I mean, I think that when this, when this took off, I mean, there'll be times I don't have, I don't have orders or my videos are junk for two weeks and you get no views. And when you see everybody going on, I'm being shadow banned. I'm being this. I'm like, it's not that you're just not putting out good crap. Like let's put on some better content and you won't have this problem. And so then I just kind of dig a little deeper, I guess. And, and I just keep going. I mean, I don't know. We've all been through a lot of stuff, right? I, I had a really bad accident, uh, 22 years ago, um, had to be aeromedded into the hospital unconscious for six days. You know, I got thrown from a vehicle. And so one of my late videos with it, maybe a week or two ago was just, Hey, you know what? I'm here for a reason. God kept me alive through all that to do something. And I think that something is to make a change to, to make some people smile and just kind of dumbed it down to that. Um, but believe me, I have, I have those days where you're like, gosh, man, I really should put something out, but I am just not feeling that. And then randomly, do you beat yourself up in those moments or do you just kind of accept it and go with it? Or like, how do you manage that dialogue? Yeah. I, I don't really beat myself up much. I've been there, done that, um, uh, in the past, just, we all go through that stage, I think. And some people never get out of it, but no, I just, Hey, it is what it is, or it is what I make it. Honestly, it is what I make it is what I tend to lean toward. Cause I don't really like it is what it is. That, that takes away your control. And I think you are constantly in control of how you react, of how you choose to move forward and how you react to any situation. So yeah, it is what you make it. You know, like, yeah, well, that one didn't work. 
maybe I'll throw it up and, and you never know, you could throw that same video up in six months and for whatever random, it just goes crazy. Not everything's going to be great. You can't think you're going to get 10 million views on, on every single piece of content you put out there, no matter what it is. It's just not going to happen. So I think coming to terms with that and, and not expecting things to be crazy in the, in the times where I was just not, not feeling it, not wanting to do it. All of a sudden I'd start getting these alerts and something would take off to, you know, 500,000 or a million views or something. And that, that changes everything. <laughs> it just has a weird way of working itself out. What yeah, I, a lot of people I get really stuck like. in that trap of, um, I made one thing and it works. So I got to keep doing that exact same thing. And it's actually the complete opposite. Sorry to cut you off there, Mitch. I just um, had to add that in. Go ahead. No, I just, it's funny. Cause I mean, I I'm always updating Devin on, on my stuff and like, you know, this video that we still have yet to figure out why it's doing so well is on its track for 700,000 views, but it's not, it's not my content. When you go through the rest of my page, it's like, it's such a random video. It's like, why is that on there? Because the message kind of changed. I'm more of a comedic music duet, engage with people type page. But what I found is yes, my, my view count isn't 10,000 plus, but what's incredible is the, the, the engagement that I do get out of the smaller amount of videos. It's like the consistent, the same amount of people that are coming on saying, keep going. I love your content. You're one of my favorite creators and I don't have a million views, but yet I have people saying like, like cheering me on, you know, to me, that's more valuable than having 10 million views and nobody gives a crap about you. So it's, I, I get I get what you're saying. Whereas like, so for me, I'm like, I don't care what my view count is. I don't care if it's a hundred. I don't care if it's 200 because it's the same people. And every once in a while you add one more person adds and they're always engaging and they're always cheering you on. And I think that's, what's beautiful. And I don't get that on any other platform other than TikTok. TikTok is the only one that I get that from. Yeah, that's true. I think I was probably trying to go in that same direction. You bring it up perfectly though. It's yeah, you got to pay attention to the small people that stick around. Like, I don't care who follows me, who doesn't follow me. You know, from that standpoint, I've got some verified creators that follow me. And people are like, oh, my gosh, you know, Udi followed you. Cute. You know, that's amazing. I can't believe it. I'd be crying right now. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, he's just another guy, you know, who who has been putting it out. He's been working his butt off on it. You know, people put in a lot of time on that stuff. So getting to a large you count and that kind of thing and changing more lives is how I, how I see it. You know, the more people I see it, obviously the more people you can reach, but yeah, I get a lot of those same ones or I get messages that they send videos or ideas or like, Hey, you got to do this, you know, put your own spin on it. Do this one. We love this. You really helped me today. I mean, I can go as far as to just drop m messages to people that follow me all the time or are their smaller accounts. It doesn't matter what they, how big they are or not, but I'll pin them to the top of my messages. And so when I pop in there and say, Hey, hope you're having a great day. And then to get a message back that says, yeah, that really helped. I really needed that. You're amazing. Thanks so much. I, I don't know these people from Adam, somebody in Washington state or in Oklahoma or something like that, other than what we've grown on social. So yeah, that's a, that is a fantastic point. And that, that resonates with me very much too. Paying attention to the impact that you're having while you're having it is such a key part of it. Uh, the idea that you're entitled to the experience, not the outcome. So thinking, oh, I need a 10 million follower account and you try, that's all you're focused on is getting 10 million followers. You're not, your attention isn't in the right place because you're not able to now deliver the thing that that person needs. There's no room for you to um, help the people along the way that are going to help grow that impact. Um, speaking of impact, I'm really curious. So after all of this has kind of like blossomed into what it is, what kind of an impact has that had on your daughter who kind of helped inspire all of this? Has she been following along and paying attention? What, what, what are her thoughts on this? Do you, do you guys have kids? I got one seven-year-old. Okay. Three. So <laughs> as you know, it's day to day. Uh, but I do know that it is giving them a consistent outlook of, you know, Hey, look, dad's doing it. You know what? She, um, actually it, from an entrepreneurial stand, entrepreneurial standpoint, she's always done like lemonade stands and things like that. I've always had side hustles. I always do stuff because it's just, I have to be doing something. The ADD kicks in, gotta be, gotta be stimulated. Um, she wants to do 
she makes in these bracelets. So like I had, she made me this one. It's got smiley faces on it. Some other things like that. She sells them around the neighborhood. And then she says, well, dad, I want to, how do I, how do I get more? How do I get to more people? I want to sell more. I want more from this. You know, it'll be, it, I just want to see how it works. So I said, well, do your thing. Give me a hundred bucks. We'll start you an account. It gives me a chance to teach her that too. And I think that independence on the entrepreneurial side or having that ability to do some sort of business or have that experience is huge too for confidence in anybody. Uh, so she went and bought, you know, her own little four by eight poly mailers and she's got these little bags that she's going to put them in and do all this other stuff. And I said, all right, you do that. I'll just, I'll just throw them up on the website and we'll see what happens. So whether she sells five or 5,000, I think it's good for her because if she also then becomes aware that it doesn't take off like that. That's just not how life works. Like you got to keep going. You got to keep doing more, find a new design, do something else. She's got her own little TikTok, but it's, it's private and locked down beyond belief. Um, so she's really not gonna be able to do much on there, but I'll have her do stuff with me and I'll see if, you know, I give her a shot to do something cool and she might make some extra money for a bike she wants or whatever it might be. And who knows? Um, but getting back to the, how's it affected them? I think, you know, she still does deal with the, the anxiety stuff because they're, they're going through what they're going through right now. They're growing up. Uh, but it also, I think is a lot less, um, long lived per se. I don't know if that word's right, but you know, she knows that, all right, you know, I can do something. And when you do for somebody else, you feel better. I think I said this uh, to you, Devin, when we were ta- talking, I don't, I don't really feel there's a whole lot of things that are truly selfless <clears throat> because everything we do has some sort of self-serving um, gratification that we get with it. So, right. you know, I mean, and that's not a bad thing, but people want to put a negative spin on that. And I have an issue with that. You know, I just think yeah, that's there's natural. a saying, um, beware the imposter success and failure. Both of them. Right. They're, they're, they're both imposters. Success can lead you to an inflated ego and, um, you know, misguided perspective of the world. And failure can make you feel like completely the opposite. You can remove all of that confidence and ability to serve. And if you just kind of ignore both of them and, uh, I guess, in the theme of this conversation, keep moving forward. Uh, you're going to continue to see both success and failure. And me and Mitch have talked about this a lot, ready, fire, aim. You can only be so ready for something before you decide that you got to pull the trigger and you're going to see where your shot lands. And when you see where it lands, it gives you an incredible opportunity to start honing in on your aim. If you were too high, you were too low, too left, too right, you can adjust course accordingly, but there has to be a willingness buried into your framework to allow for those things to happen. And, uh, I know when I was younger, I struggled with that. Um, if you do something good for somebody, you're going to get a benefit out of it regardless. So nothing is truly selfless. I think this out of the seven deadly sins, uh, pride is the one that can't be defeated. Because you could throw yourself off a, a bridge to save a life, but on the way down, pride kicks in and goes, see, I did the right thing. Yep. And so uh, defeating that, that, that's such a hard thing to get past. I'm curious for you, how have you managed to, uh, to navigate that? As far as what, I guess. Uh, disconnecting from whoever that like the naysayers that are like, yeah, well, you're just doing this so you can make money. It has nothing to do with the smiles or, you know, whatever, whatever have you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you, you know, navigate that? I think it does take a lot to not respond, uh, to comments or, or someone saying that, cause I have gotten some like that. So if you go for the negative feedback, I get, it might be that, you know, people are saying, oh, well, he probably buys them for this much. And he's making loads of money. If you guys with these, and honestly, I just know that they don't know what they're talking about. So I really don't care. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't give, give zero, zero shits about that. I, that takes a while too. And I think a lot of people have that is tough to, to achieve, but I just, I, I'm good. It, it's you know, a weird even, sense of freedom. Even Clark Kent needed a job, right? Because right. 
uh, the, I told Evan this, the gas companies, they don't care how well-intentioned you are. Right. You got to pay them. <laughs> and you know, the power companies and the mortgage company, they don't care that you're a good person. They don't care that you're trying to bring cheer to the world. Uh, they want their money. So the more well-intentioned you are, the harder it is to make money. And the, I've always had that. So to me, isn't it the dream to make some money and do what you're passionate and bring joy to others? And anyone who brings that down, they don't understand what it means to make someone else happy. And, and it's not just about monetizing it, but sorry, but good people need to make a living too. They need to pay their bills. They need to support their family. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. Going back to what you said, I really, really feel is important because it's a, it's a message that me and Devin send out all the time is, you know, teaching your daughter some entrepreneur skills. And, you know, I feel that not everyone in the world should be an entrepreneur because it, not everyone's comfortable doing that. And that's fine. You have to find out what you want. What I love about it is the school system does not teach entrepreneurs. It does not teach anything except uh, a schedule and a routine and a curriculum that was passed by somebody else that wasn't you. So I'm not anti-education. However, I think that as parents, we have a responsibility to show that there's more, that there's options. And it's not about becoming a millionaire. It's not about becoming rich. It's Hey, do you want to do something that's important to you? Well, here's how you do it because nobody else is teaching that to them. And so I think for you, uh, if there's something that, you know, you can take from us, it, it's our encouragement to you to say, keep teaching your kids to do that because maybe they'll just go get a really good job, but they're going to bring skills that come from this, or maybe they'll go and start something for themselves. Either way, it's going to benefit them in whatever path they do. So I think for anyone listening to this that, that has kids, it's so important that they have the opportunity to learn some of those basic skills that school's not going to teach them. Yeah, man. Like if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, the fish is going to think it's an idiot for its entire life. Yeah. But if you judge the fish on its ability to swim, that, that fish can excel at whatever it's doing. And uh, like Mitch said, the responsibility of, you know, you brought this person into the world. If you can at least show them all the options, there's potential there for them to explore, um, freely without thinking that they're less than, uh, or inadequate in, you know, the grander scheme of things. I think we all just kind of want to fit in, um, on that note, what plans do you have for the future now as things are kind of unfolding? Where is this headed for you? No clue. <laughs> That's perfect. It's my no favorite clue. answer. <laughs> yeah. And that is exciting as hell to me. Good, good. Yeah. I was going to say, so how does that, how does that feel? <laughs> it feels amazing. Um, you know, I, I'll circle back real quick to this, to the school system stuff. My kids, you know, there's a reason that there's a, are you smarter than a fifth grader TV show? Cause if you get crammed all this other stuff that you're just never going to use, never remembered in your life and you get crammed in your head and you don't use it later on. And that's fine. I get, I get, they have to have a generalized thing. Um, but I do think that having that ability, the skills to actually do real world stuff, start a podcast, start to motivate people, start to make a difference. However, that may be, you have to understand business. And so in order to, to continue to be a business and continue to do the things that you love, and maybe you are impacting a ton of lives, you've got to make some money. And so when people try and downplay that, I mean, I use some, some more choice words when I'm speaking, maybe not on this podcast, but you know what, come on people like, what, what, how does the world go around? You know I mean? Open your eyes a little bit and you have to understand, I just can't give everything away. Cause if you give it all away, you got nothing to continue going. And that was the conversation I was having with uh, Josh and Chris here, two other creators that were working on the move it forward thing with. And you know, he was like, Oh, I just, let's just give it all away. I just, I want to give them all this to this one person. I said, if you start doing that, you're gonna have nothing to give to anybody else. And you're going to have to shut down and close your doors immediately. Cause wh how else are you going to fund it? You know, so you have to make money. There has to be, you know, some overhead and some markup in it so that you can continue pushing it forward. Um, and so to that note, I mean, I'm coming up with different ideas on things to, to put out there. That'll be positive reminders all the time. I'm sourcing it from kind of all over the place, everything, you know, stuck, everything's stuck in shipping containers off the coast of California right now. But, um, yeah, I have no clue where this is going to go. I just know that that's exciting to me. And if I, if I really didn't have as many obligations as my family and all the things that we have already right now, 
I'd be done doing my own, you know, working the regular nine to five and be doing this immediately effective tomorrow or effective this afternoon. Yesterday. Life has a way of doing <laughs> that where it doesn't let us do that. Right. But yeah. And who knows if, if I did take that leap, if, if everything would be okay. And it would be, I think you have to have that mindset where you're not afraid to lose in order to win. The only way you're going to ever win is to not be afraid to lose. You're going to fall before you can climb. And you could say a million other, you know, examples of how to say that, but it, it, that is what it is. You, you got to just take that leap. I think uh, risk management is, is such a huge thing to talk about because um, this job that you have and a hundred others just like it are going to be there today, tomorrow, 10 years from now or whatever, for the most part. Um, I think the, the risk of quitting your job and going and exploring something is much smaller than the risk of staying where you are at and being unhappy and never having an impact and never living a purposeful life. Because when you get to the end of that and the pile of regrets that you're going to have on your deathbed is just so much more than the alternative. I think on top of that too, like what I think not only what I've experienced, but, but what I'm seeing, and especially in the past year and a half, is the only person that you can rely on is you. No one's and, coming for you. Right. And I had a job that I planned on dying at, to be honest. And that was two years ago. And then one day that job wasn't there anymore. And that was pre pandemic. And so that was a really hard lesson for me that even, even a company that I, I invested in, I sacrificed time with my kids for, they didn't care about me. And, and they just let me go. And so from that point on, it was like, no, I got to do something for myself. And, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to, you know, go and create some, it's like, no, I just, I, I can't rely on anyone. If I have to team up with somebody, that's totally cool. But I have to rely on myself because school. And I've told Devin this school taught me that when I did their test on what I'd be really good at in life, it was a crane operator and a taxi driver. That's what school told me I'd be good at. And, and here I am co-hosting a, a podcast. We've got, you know, coaching businesses. We're getting clients. Like it's really neat to see, but other people held me down. And now I'm looking around and seeing people that had secure, secure jobs. And guess what? They don't have them anymore. Why? Uh, well, in the States, they were over hundred people. Uh, so the business didn't want the fine and there's people getting fired so they can stay under the hundred. So those people couldn't rely on them. Um, we've also got up here, uh, big airlines that laid off 2000 people for no particular reason, other than they just were worried about their bottom end. So how, how much can you rely? And I think what, what you're doing shows that, that yes, you need your, you need a, a job right now to fulfill some, some bills, but you're setting up because at some point you have to rely on yourself because tomorrow you could lose your job. It's, it's I'm trying to get fired for six months, man, because I can't push myself off that cliff. But if they did it for me, my God, it would be amazing. And maybe, you know what? That's the thing is like, I, I always, every, every single day, I wonder, what if I just did it? What if I just said, <laughs> screw you guys, I'm out. And this is what I got. What would you do then? But I can't quite get there. Right. Like, <laughs> like come on, just, you guys just let me go. Like, but I'm too good at what I do, which also sucks. Uh, so that they're not going to let me go. So I'm going to have to pull the plug myself, uh, you know, eventually. And I will. It, that's just that's where it'll go. I I don't lose. I always say that I don't lose. I don't lose because I don't. I'm just not afraid to fail. My wife, on the other hand, is different. You know, they like that security. They want to know. I don't, I'm me, I just life's an adventure. Like, let me out. I don't want to be 85 and find out I have terminal cancer. I got three weeks to live and regret every, you know, not everything, but have a huge list of regrets. Like you said, that's not where I want to be. And that's not for everybody either. I don't, I don't know that everybody feels that. I know not everybody feels that way and that's fine. The world needs everybody, right? Everybody, you need all these different types of people, people that will just love to work for someone their entire life. Great. I, I think that's wonderful because we need that too. Um, yeah, it's just not going to be me. <laughs> I still don't know when. I've, I've always said that there's two kinds of people. There's leaders and followers, and it's not bad to be either one. A follower doesn't mean that they're a bad person or they're incompetent. It means that they need someone else helping them drive their goals. 
and they know yeah. what they're good at. They've recognized yeah. that, you know what, this is and exactly supportive. what I'm good at and I'm comfortable doing that. And, and that isn't that kind of at the end of the day, you know, the thing that we're all looking for is just personal fulfillment and, and, and meaning in life and what we do and the contribution that we're making and the impacts that we're having and all that kind of stuff. Like that's for me, that's the hugest take home or the biggest value that I get out of everything that I do is that when I see somebody, and this is my personal mantra, when I see somebody, I can promise you that they're going to be better after I've met them because I want to leave people better than when I found them. That's like, that's the whole thing for, for what I want to do. And when I think about the idea that you can fail at the thing you hate doing, like Mitch pointed out, you can completely lose your job. The rug can get pulled out right from underneath your feet and you had no idea it was coming. So you can fail at that. So, you know, why not fail at something you like doing too? Like you don't have to either or it. It's just why not fail at something you love doing too a couple of times just to see if you can get better at it, right? We also talked about failure in previous podcasts. <laughs> and I don't, I don't believe there is such a thing as failure. Mm-hmm. I think failure is relative. Failure is only the ability, the, the missing a mark. But who set the mark? And who says the mark stays there? <laughs> Right. Like failing is <laughs> always moving, man. Exactly. So it's like, was the, was the goal to make money and you didn't make any money? Well, why did you put that there in the first place? So failure is, is relative. And and that whole show kind of goes into that idea. And I think what you're, you're bringing forward is, is kind of relative to that, where it's like, what is failure? And, you know, it, not missing the mark. Does that mean you got to close up your business of sending out positivity? Why, why is that failing? It just means you got to change direction or adapt or you, you looked at what didn't work. That's not failure. So I, I love that from an entrepreneur standpoint, because one of the things we do on the show is really try to encourage entrepreneurs and, and give them some insight and mindset to say, like, don't let other people set your mark. Don't let other people tell you what you're doing is wrong or right. Let the market tell you that. You have the power to make adjustments within your own company. How many of us have worked for businesses and got, these guys are stupid. Like they're (laughs) missing out on this, right? Like, what are they thinking? 38 jobs later, bro. You have no control. You have no control over what's going on. And I think that's beautiful for working for yourself or creating something for yourself is you can say, hey, we got to change direction and you do it. Why don't you listen to your your followers, right? You listen to your people. What do they want to hear? If you go back into the content side of things, I play around with all different type of things. When I'm more realistic, I, I relate more on an empathetic side. Those do really well. I realize my crowd likes that and that's very much me. And so I love doing that uh, and getting feedback and being able to pivot, you know, like your fat cats up in corporate, then the very top, they're doing the marketing. I mean, do they really understand what's on the ground? No, I, I don't feel they do a lot of times. I think some companies do it very well. Others don't pay attention. They're just trying to follow the next trend or be the next one to the, to be first in something. And it's like, you, it's not that, it's not that complicated. It's the business of people, no matter what it is, the relationships, friendships, you know, family, it's, it's, it's people and treat people right. Do the right thing, feel how they're feeling and be considered with that. And then, then you'll do all right. I, I think the great, good example of that is there's, there's companies right now that have their multi-billion dollar companies. They're huge. And they can pay for TV advertisements. They can pay for Google ads. They have the money to do all that. But on TikTok, they cannot gain traction. They cannot get followers on TikTok. And these are companies that you see every day, every mall you go into, every time you turn on a Big Bang Theory and their ad comes on. That's These are the companies and they can't gain traction because TikTok, you have to relate to people. You actually have to prove value to connect with them. And these companies are missing the mark. And I think the the smaller entrepreneur companies that you see on there, they're hitting the mark and they're connecting and relating to people. These, these companies that maybe they do, you know, a hundred thousand dollars sales in a year, they're, they're gaining huge followers over top of these multinational companies on TikTok. I think that's the power of connecting with people. And so I think you're bang on there. When that, when that one guy can just do those spoof videos about, you know, five minute crafts or five minute hacks or whatever. And they're trying to create this hack. And, and he just like points out the most, he just like sits there with this like smile on his face. And then when it's done, he's like, 
It's got like <laughs> nine billion, nine million viewers. Or, or <laughs> right? Like, how did this yeah. guy get fifty-four million followers on on TikTok? But it does go to support that thing. Um, we're kind of coming up to the end of the conversation here. Steve, um, I want to get something from you for the rest of the viewers here. We like to kind of wrap things up with, if there was like a, a really solid um, first step forward for anybody that's kind of facing uh, challenges and doesn't know what to do, could you package up like one solid actionable thing that people can take home today and just and start doing to kind of overcome those things? So do you guys edit this? <laughs> we try. Okay, so you might have to edit this out, but stop giving a fuck about what people think. I love it. That has got to be number one. In the end, their opinion doesn't mean shit. It doesn't, it does not define you. And what people take as perfection or what they, they might perceive as success and catch and catch crap for from other people, who cares is not their definition right? Like we try and hold ourselves to a standard of somebody else's view of us. When in all reality, who, who cares? As long as, as long as you're good with it, that's your, your perfection. We're all imperfect, perfectly imperfect. I push that all the time to my kids all the time too, is that perfection is relative. Success is relative. Everything is relative and it's all perspective. Perspective is huge. So the second we stop caring so much about someone else's bullshit view of what you do or how successful you are, what car you have in the driveway or what house you live in, the faster your road to being truly joyful will be and having happiness, I think. So my biggest thing would be stop caring. It sounds what a, prudish, what a perfect but. period to this entire whole thing. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, for anybody that's watching, if you found this content helpful or valuable in any way, like, share, follow, tag a friend, tell somebody about it, because um, it really helps us connect with the right people so that we can do what we love doing, which is helping you guys. Um, and it helps the algorithm so that we can get discovered everywhere else. Uh, if you want to get in touch with anybody here on the show, you can always send us an email at email the perspective at gmail.com um, that comes directly to me or Mitch and, and we can uh, hook you up with whatever it is that you need help with. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, life, week, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>